we're being asked to discuss the concavity and find the inflection points of x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. Well, it, it makes sense that we would need the inflection points to discuss the concavity. So that's just a little added thing to help you remember that the, the terminology inflection points and, and what they exactly are. Okay, so first things first, let's, let's take the first derivative because we know that to, de to determine concavity, we need to find out when the first derivative is increasing and decreasing. So taking this derivative is pretty easy. And, and the first derivative is increasing when the slopes are positive and decreasing when the slopes are negative. So to find the slopes of the first derivative, we need the second derivative. So that's the second derivative. It's the derivative of the derivative. Okay, now, if, if, the, if the first derivative it switches from increasing to decreasing, then that, then that means it, that switch must happen at, at one of its critical numbers. Or if it goes from decreasing to increasing, that happens at one of its critical numbers. So, just like we found critical numbers of an original function, by setting the original function's derivative equal to zero. Now we're gonna find critical numbers of the derivative by setting its derivative equal to zero. And I hope that makes sense to you because the second derivative is really the slopes of the first derivative. And if this first derivative goes from increasing to decreasing or it makes a switch from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, that happens at a critical number, which means that right at that number, the slope is, is horizontal, or the slope is equal to zero. So the actual, the slope of the derivative. So we're thinking of the derivative as, as its own new function now. And we're finding its critical numbers, essentially. And the critical numbers of the derivative are inflection points. So in other words, when the derivative, when the actual derivative has horizontal slope, then you have an inflection point. And that's the same thing as, as saying the second derivative is equal to zero because the second derivative is the slope of the first derivative. Okay, I've said the same thing a, a million times in a row. I just, I hope that I'm not confusing you by with, with these layers of derivatives. Okay, let's continue anyways. 12x times x minus two. That's how this will factor is equal to zero and now that's that's pretty easy to solve this is when x is zero or two so that's when the second derivative is equal to zero and and when the second derivative is equal to zero that's called an inflection point it's also it's also like i was just saying it's a critical number of the first derivative because the second derivative being equal to zero means the slope of the first derivative is is zero meaning that the slope of the first derivative is horizontal which of course is, is what, that's exactly what I was trying to say to you, that the slope is horizontal. And you can see, hopefully you can see the relationship that if you have a maximum on the first derivative, then the function will switch from increasing to decreasing. Okay, I, I, I can't get away from this point. I don't know why uh, I, I'm having such a hard time moving on. I just, I hope that I'm explaining it well to you for you to really wrap your minds around it. Anyways, let's let's try and test where where this first derivative is increasing and decreasing. And we're going to do that by setting up this little table and and we're going to just call this this setup the second derivative test. And memorizing that I don't think is going to be very useful because you should you should understand what we've been talking about and then you won't really have to memorize it. You'll just know that you should do this or ideally that's what would happen. Okay, so I set up one too many one too many slots. Just erase this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to test some values. We're going to plug them into the first derivative or let me let me do this, test. So in this interval let's test negative 1, that seems pretty easy. In this interval let's test 1. And in this interval, let's test, oh, I don't know, three. Seems pretty easy. 
So uh, we're just picking easy numbers in these intervals to test. Then, we're, then after we pick the, the, those numbers, we're going to plug them into the second derivative and find out the sign. So here is the second derivative. We, we could use either form, whatever you find easier. If we have negative 1 squared, that's positive 1 times 12, that's positive, minus 24 times negative 1. Well, that's a negative times a negative, so that's positive. So this is positive. And I, I'm, I'm not going to go through and explain the calculations. Just plug negative 1 into this derivative, and you'll find out it's a positive number. If we plug 1 in, on the other hand, that's a negative number. And if we plug 3 in, well, then we're going to get, let's see, a po that's going to be a positive number. And 3, I think, is easier to see this way. It's just a positive times 1. It's going to be 36. OK, so that's a positive number. Now, what does that mean? That means the, der the, the first derivative, remember, these are the slopes. So the slopes of the first derivative are positive. That means the first derivative is increasing. The slopes of the first derivative for on this new interval are decreasing because the slopes are negative, and the slopes on the last interval are, po are positive, meaning that, that the, the first derivative is increasing. And so now we know that, that this function is concave up on this interval, down, concave down on this interval, and concave up on that interval. So we discussed the concavity and we, and we found the inflection points. And let me try and shrink oops, let me try and shrink this down just a little bit. I don't know if it will still be readable. I can't tell if that's readable or not, but maybe it'll just help remind you of, of what we were talking about. And now I want to let's see. Oh, that's not the right, that's not the graph I wanted to, to paste in yet. Okay, so in blue we have the original function, and in red we have its derivative. So let's take a look at this real quick. We said that the function is concave down between negative infinity and zero. So from negative infinity, let me get a thicker pencil to zero, the function is concave down, this blue function. From zero to positive two, so that's right here, the function is concave up. Oh wait, no, sorry, it's, sorry, that's, we said it was concave up from negative infinity to zero, concave down from zero to two, and concave up from, from 2 to infinity. So this was 0 to 2, and then beyond that, that was 2 to infinity. Okay. Now let me let me erase this so I so that you can see it better what's going on. Those and, and our points of our inflection were at 0 and at 2. So let me just be okay. There it is. And you can see, or hopefully you can see anyways, that there we go. That when x is 2, there's a couple things happening. The derivative has a minimum. And the graph of the function has an inflection point right here. That's right where the, the function switches from concave down to concave up. And the same thing happens here. When x is 0, the derivative has a maximum and the function has switches from concave up to concave down. You can see that switch happening. It goes like this. It's concave up and then it switches to concave down right at that inflection point. Okay. So hopefully hopefully that helps. Oh, and then the last thing I wanted to say real quick is this increasing. You can see the derivative is increasing from negative infinity to zero, decreasing from zero to two, and then increasing again after two. So hopefully the, this is starting to click a little bit, the relationship between the, a, gra a function, its derivative, and then now finally the second derivative. Okay, see you in the next video.